In this first demo, we'll be making the pistol and I have the green beads in my bead spinner here and we'll be using the 28 gauge green wire. Now let's string on five beads onto the wire here. And for the pistol, we're just going to do something really simple. We're going to make a five bead loop. So let's measure out two inches for the tail. That's two inches. With these beads, we're going to form this into a loop and twist it. Just cross the wires underneath the five beads and twist. And we're going to cut another tail off of the spool. Now I'm going to show you another way. The first way that I showed you is by crossing the two wires together to form a loop. Now another way that you can make this if um, if the first method is a bit hard for you, and it is for some people, surprisingly, making a loop is um, surprising one of the hardest things. <laughs> um, another way that you can do it is by just kind of holding on to the two wires with your thumb, and then take your fingers and just bend the beads up here, and then hold, let's move our thumb higher on to the wire here and then take your fingers here and twist. So that's another way to make this loop there. And let's do this one more time. Two inch tail, five beads, what I like to do normally is I like to take my finger and kind of put it underneath the beads, kind of flip it so that the two wires are crossed underneath the beads. And then I put my finger um, underneath the cross of the wires and twist. And I'm going to show you the second method again. We bend these, bend the beads like this. Hold on to the wires here. Pinch the beads into a loop. Move your thumb up and twist. Just twist twice is okay. All right. So those are the two methods that you can use to make a simple loop. And you'll need to make four of these pistols, one for each flower A and flower B. In this demo, we'll be working on the stamens and we'll need the 30 gauge gold wire, the um, size 15 yellow beads A and B, and the size 11 brown bead. And for each stamen unit, we'll need a stamen A and a stamen B. So for stamen A, we'll need to cut out 11 inches of the 30 gauge gold wire. So let's measure that out. So I have color A in this bead spinner here, color B in this little cup, and also the brown bead in this cup here. I'm gonna move these out of the way. Let's make a knot at one end so that the beads don't fall out as we are making them. And for the first stamen, we will need to string on four of the color A yellow, three of color B yellow and brown. I really don't need a bead, <laughs> bead spinner for this, uh, but why not? I've got four of the A, and then three of the B. I'm just going to and then one of the brown. So we have our four color A, four color B, and one of the brown. 
and let's move the beads down to the one end. Um, not we're gonna need a two inch tail, um, but let's not worry too much about the tail just yet. We're just gonna eyeball about two inches for the tail. All right, we'll adjust later. So let's um, move the one brown bead over. And then we're gonna hold on to the rest of the beads. And we're gonna take the longer end of the wire, um, the working wire, and thread it through the rest of the yellow beads. All right, and now we're going to pull on the working wire. And let's not pull it all the way through just yet. Um, undo any kinks or anything in this loop here. And now we're going to adjust um, the the length of the tail wire. So you can just move the beads one way or another to adjust the length of the wire. So for uh, the tail wire, we want two inches for the tail wire. All right, so our two inch mark is right here. So let's move the beads down to this two inch mark. And I'm gonna hold on to the beads. And this, the, the loop here has kind of like twisted, so I'm just going to untwist it so that it's going to do, so it's gonna be a nice smooth pull when we pull on it. So let's take the tail wire, I mean, now let's take the working wire and pull. Let's string on another one of this pattern of the four color A, three color B, and one brown. So I move all the beads to the one end. And again, we're going to make another fringe. So let's move the brown bead here. Hold on to the yellow beads, take the working wire, smooth it out so that you can pass it through the beads easily. Thread it back through the rest of the beads. We just want to wor worry about getting the wire through the beads first. Let's pull, and now we can adjust. Okay, undo any kinks in the loop. Now let's push the beads all the way to the end. And I like to bend it up, so I'm holding on to both of the fringes. And now pull. Just uh, also make sure um, you pay attention to this loop. And pull. All right, so now we have two fringes. And here's an optional step that you can do. What I like to do sometimes, I like to take the working wire and just wrap it around the fringe at the base. So that way it locks it in and it doesn't pull the wires apart. Now we have the finished stamen A. So let's fold it in half and then take the two ending tail wires and twist it together just once, just very slightly, tightly at the base, okay? And now because there are two wires at one end of the stamen here, it's, it's not balanced when we assemble the stamens here. So we want to reposition one of the tail wires. So, okay, so here. So pull up, down one of the stamens here from across the first side. And we're gonna take one of the tail wires and just wrap it around the base of the stamen here. So now after we do that, after we reposition it, now we have a one tail, tail wire on one end and a tail wire on the other end. So that it's a lot more stable when we assemble it. It's not all just lopsided to one side. For stamen B, we're going to need 12 10 bead fringes, five of color A, four of color B, and one of brown. So that makes 10 beads total. All right, this wire is quite loopy, so I'm just... Oh man, sometimes that happens. Okay, so... Again, we want to have a two inch tail and we're just going to eyeball it for now. All right, let's move the one brown bead. Thread it 
thread it through the rest of the yellow beads. And now we're going to adjust. So the two inch mark is right here. So we're going to move the beads down to this two inch mark and pull. So on this fringe here for the fourth fringe, I had one less bead. I'm just going to leave it. It's not going to make a huge deal. I'm not going to make a huge deal about it, like taking beads off and everything like that. I'm just going to leave it. It'll still turn out fine. So now I have the 12 fringes done. We're just going to finish it the same way that we did with stamen A. Twist this slightly at the base, just once. So now both wires are all on one side. Because this is a, um, a larger stamen, you can see the difference that the wire is all on this side and there's nothing on this side here. So let's bend one of these stamen, uh, one of the fringes down from the other end and take one of the tail wires, take the longer one and just wrap it around. Bend the fringe back and now we have a tail wire on each end. So now let's um, assemble this stamen here. All right, so we have stamen B, stamen A, and we're going to need one pistol unit. So we have our one pistol. So let's open up um, stamen A here. And then you're going to find a hole right in the center. I'm going to take our pistol, our little five bead loop and insert that into the hole of stamen A. Okay, and going to twist this just gently, firmly, gently and firmly, um, just a few times, two or three times. And I've got a little loop here still, so I'm going to cut this here. Okay, and now we're going to open up our stamen B and take these wires and insert that into the hole of stamen B. and twist just a few times. All right, so now we have our center with our pistol and stamens. Let's just open it up a little. A lot of in the flowers is shaping. So however your um, flower looks depends on how you shape it. So, and we're just going to do that as we go. I mean, you'll still shape it at the end, but if you do it as you go, um, then it, you just have a, a easier time at the end. All right, so uh, our one is center, all assembled and we are ready for the next part. In this demo, I'll be showing you how to make the sepals. The technique that we'll be using is the continuous loop fringe. We'll be using the size 11 green seed beads again and also the 28 gauge green wire. Let's cut out 15 inches of the wire here. And again, we'll make a loop at the end, just a little knot so that the beads don't fall out. Just kind of straighten out the wire if it's too kind of loopy. Let's string on 13 beads onto the wire. And let's move it to the end. And again, we'll be needing a two inch tail, but we're not gonna worry about it too much just yet. We're gonna eyeball it around the two inch mark. For the fringe part, we'll do seven beads, and for the loop part, we'll need six beads. So let's count out seven beads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, tw
for the fringe. And then the six beads, we're just going to move it to the end and not worry about it for now. Okay, so I'm gonna, so we have the seven beads here. Let's move the one bead and then hold on to the rest of the six beads here. So move the one bead to the side, hold on to the six beads and thread the working wire through the rest of the six beads right there. Okay, and now we're gonna pull. All right, now we're going to adjust. Okay, let's move the beads down, measure. This is about two inches right there. Hold on to this mark here, and this top here just kind of got, looks twisted, so we want to undo any twists in the loop here. Hold on to the beads and pull onto the working wire. So now we have our seven bead fringe, and then we have our six beads right here on the tail wire that will become part of our loop. And let's string on another six beads onto the working wire. Move the beads up. And now we're gonna hold on to both wires. And take your other hand and twist. We want to do it tightly at the base. So you want the twist right at the base here. Okay, don't want to make any long twisted wires, just right, just tightly. All right, okay, so now we're going to make another loop fringe. So let's string on another 13 beads. Now in between each of the fringe loops, we want to have about one eighth inch of space in between. Um, just because of the size of the flowers that we're making, we don't want to have all of the steeples to be all bunched up together. And having this small allowance of space, this bare wire in between each of the loops helps with that. So we don't want to have the sepals to be tightly together or else all of the sepals will be bunched up to one side of the flower um, and not dis distribute it evenly. Okay, so, but let's not worry about too much about that as of right now. Um, we just want to worry about our top fringe. Okay, so five, four, five, six, seven. So we want our seven beads right here. Move the one bead over and get our working wire through the six beads. Okay. So now is the time where we adjust. So let's move these beads here. So this is about one eighth inch of space and we're gonna move these beads down. Okay, so this is where we want it, right? All right. So we're gonna hold on to it and pull. And now we're going to string on another six beads. All right, hold on to it and twist tightly at the base here. We don't want to have a long twisted wire. If you twist too much to have a longer twisted wire, um, you will use up this wire. Um, and you can definitely do that as a technique if you want to have, if you want to close up the gap of the space, but we don't want to close the gap. We want to keep that. Okay, so now we'll make another one. And this is our finished sepals unit. You need to make one sepal for each bud, flower A and flower B. So for the whole pattern, we want to make five of these sepals. In this demo, I'll be showing you how to make the leaves and we'll be needing the size 11 green seed beads again. And for wire, we'll be using 24 gauge green wire. And we're just going to string on some beads onto the wire. For leaf A, we'll need to string on a, about eight inches of beads onto the wire. And for leaf B, we'll need to string on about 11 inches of beads on a wire. 
Okay, so we have our beads onto the spool of wire. Make a knot at one end here. And for leaf A, the pattern calls for a five bead basic. Um, pointed top, rounded bottom, nine rows. And for the five bead basic, we'll need to move five beads down to the end here. Okay, and we need a one inch top basic wire. So let's get our ruler here. One inch top basic wire. And of course you can eyeball this, but I just wanted um, to show you. All right, and for the twisted wire and loop, we want to have two inches. So we're going to make a loop here, like this. At that one inch mark. And we're going to adjust this to be about two inches, okay? So you can adjust the loop here. Hold on to the cross right here. Okay, and then you can adjust bigger or smaller, okay? So we want from this part, from the cross to the end to be two inches, okay? So right here, so from here to here is two inches. And we're gonna twist, about half an inch or so is good. We don't need to measure that, just eyeball is okay. So this here is the basic row with our five beads and now we are on to row two. So let's move the wire with the beads and just line it up with the center row there, okay? And we want to have the, the working wire at a 45 degree angle. So normally when we wrap, we go like this at a 90 degree angle and you'll get a rounded top. But we want to have a pointed top, so we do this. We position the wire at a 45 degree angle and we're gonna wrap this way in order to achieve a pointed top. Okay, and a bead moved, so I'm gonna put this bead back. Okay, so you put the, the leaf over your forefinger Put your thumb over it, okay? Ha position the wire at a 45 degree angle. And we're going to go behind at this angle and back to the front at this angle. Okay, push the beads up. And now you have a pointed top. So now I'm gonna rotate my work so that it is always pointing up. Push the beads onto the wire. Make sure that it covers all of the wire. Um, you want to have it cover the point or else you're gonna get bare wire there and you don't wanna have to see bare wire from the front. Okay, so I'm gonna put this, you, you see all these dents in here? Um, that's how firm, firmly I'm holding on to it. Okay, so put this over your finger, put your thumb over it, okay? And remove any excess beads here. So you want this just to be right at where the twisted wire is, okay? And and for this, we want a round bottom. So we're going to have the wire at a 90 degree angle. We're gonna go straight behind, back to the front. And that's how we get a rounded bottom. We rotate this so that the uh, basic wire is pointing up again. And so we have three rows. We have a five bead basic, three rows. And now let's, so now we're on to row four. Push the beads down, okay. And we again, we want to have this at a 45 degree angle. Remove the excess beads. Hold on to it firmly. Make sure to have your wire at this angle. Go behind at this angle. Bring it back to the front at this angle. Push the beads up and push down on to the wire. And now we are ready to make the next row. All right. 
and rotate our work again. We are on to row five. We're going to take the wire and at a 90 degree angle, go behind, back to the front, rotate. Now we have five rows. Okay, and for leaf A, we want to have nine rows. Okay, so we have our nine rows right here. To finish this off, we want to have one bottom wire. So let's undo any twists, undo most of the twists. Okay, now let's take the working wire and just wrap it around. Okay, and going to snip this off. All right, and we're gonna take the cutters and cut right here so that um, we get one bottom wire. And the reason why we want to just have one bottom wire is we want to have the thinnest stem possible. Um, sometimes you can, you may want to have two bottom wires, but for this pattern, I just want to have one bottom wire. So I'm going to take these pliers. These are jewelry pliers and not pliers that I would normally use, but it is right next to me, so I'm going to use it. <laughs> okay. So, all right. And I'm just going to kind of like tuck this wire in, kind of tuck these gently so that it's nice and straight. All right. Okay. And for the top, we're going to cut um, uh, leaving about one eighth inch of wire. Turn it around and take your fingers and bend the wire back. All right. So now we have one of leaf A. And for this pattern, we want to make 20 of leaf A and four of leaf B. In this demo, we'll be assembling the leaf stems, and for each leaf stem, we'll need one of leaf B, four of leaf A, a 20 gauge length of stem wire, embroidery floss, and floral tape as needed. Um, we don't want to use too much of the floral tape because the more floral tape that we wrap around the stem, the bulkier our ending stem will be. And with the stem wire being so thin, the more floral tape that we add, add on here, the more bulkier it will be. And we want to avoid that as much as possible. There are multiple ways that we can attach the leaves onto the stem wire, and I'll show you uh, two or three ways to do that. One without any floral tape um, so that you can get the thinnest possible um, stem wire as you can. But if you aren't able to do the step um, without floral tape, then I will show you how to do that. And the best place to place the stem wire on here is right in front here of the leaf. So that there's kind of like a space right here. And then also when you wrap it, you won't see the stem wire in the back. So it will just be right in this nook right here. All right, so let's hold on to our tail right here and wrap our stem in. All 
All right, we're gonna go down about an inch or so and then attach two leaves A's on either side of the stem. I'm gonna put one over the embroidery floss right here, hold on to it from the bottom here with my finger here so it supports the leaf and then wrap this around once very once or twice very tightly and then we're going to place another one on this side here and then wrap that in one two okay and now we can go down another inch Okay, now I'm gonna put this over the, I'm gonna bend this leaf to the side, hold on to this here, support it with my finger underneath, and then wrap it with the floss. Wrap it around twice, very securely, and then attach the next one. Right here, and we don't want to go down too much. Probably just about a quarter inch is all we need. But cut enough of the floss so that you can make your knot. Okay, I'm gonna need, need a help with my tool. Trim this here. Okay, and now I'm gonna wrap this the bottom tail wires in. Now I'm gonna wrap the knot in it with floral tape. Okay, pull on the floral tape and wrap. Let's go all the way down. I'm just gonna wrap until the Tail wires are covered. Cut. You can go all the way down too, but um, if your your floral tape is not as sticky, um, it's not going to affect much after you when you assemble. All right, and I'm just going to shape these leaves, putting the leaves over my finger, holding on to it and kind of bend it up like this. Putting this over my finger, bend down and kind of up. Shaping it now means that there'll be less work later when it's assembled. It's harder to kind of shape it um, after, after it's been assembled. So as you are assembling everything as you are beating, it's best to just shape it. Now I'm going to show you another way of assembling the leaf stems um, with using the floral tape um, to help us. If you are having problems with the leaves slipping on the uh, stem wires, um, then we'll use uh, some floral tape to help with the grip. So we just want to kind of wrap just the top with floral tape. Just a little bit to guide it. We don't want too much to bulk up our uh, leaf stems. And again, it will place the wire over the leaf here so that when you wrap it, you don't see the stem behind right here. Um, you can either wrap this around, secure it with 30 gauge stem wire, or just use the floss and wrap it in. If there is still not enough grip for you to um, just kind of wrap it with the embroidery floss, then use the 30 gauge wire to attach the uh, leaf on before you wrap it.
Can you tell the difference uh, between the thickness of the stems, which one was made with the bare wire and which one was made using the help of um, the floral tape? And you can tell just by looking at it that um, one is slightly thicker and one is um, slightly slimmer. Um, this one uh, was made using the aid of the fluoro tape, and you can tell that it is just a slightly thicker uh, stem. It's not a huge difference, but if you do use the help of the fluoro tape and with the um, assembly wire, with the 30 gauge wire to attach, um, you will definitely notice that it's a lot bulkier. So if you can to maintain the thinness of the stems, um, not to use the fluoro tape. Um, but if not, this is not horrible. <laughs> it still, it still looks good. In this demo, I'll be showing you how to make the bud. And to make the bud, again, we'll be using the basic frame technique. And we'll be using a size 11 C beads for the petal. So whatever petal color you want and also um, petal color wire. So I'll be using the pink wire here, the 24 gauge pink wire. All right, to make, for each bud, you'll need to have three inches of beads onto the wire. And for the bud, it's going to be a one bead basic. So let's just move one bead to the end here. And we need a one inch top basic wire and two inch uh, twisted wire and loop. So one inch here and then two inch here. So I'm gonna adjust. So that's about two inches. All right, and I'm gonna twist. I'm gonna twist about one fourth inch. All right. The pattern for the bud calls for rounded top and pointed bottoms, seven rows. All right, so let's make our next second row here. Now, usually with units with just one bead for the basic row, the second row is usually around three beads or so. Okay, so I have my three beads for the second row. And then for the rest of the rows, then we're just going to you know, just have enough beads. So we want a rounded top, so we're gonna have it at a 90 degree angle with the wire like this. Go behind, back to the front, feed our beads on, bend the wire down, and rotate our basic frame. And now we're going to do a pointed bottom Put your unit over your forefinger, put your thumb over it, but you want to leave enough space where um, you can kind of see just like one bead of space where you can see where you're wrapping. Okay, so at a 45 degree angle, we're gonna go behind, back to the front, push our beads up and push this down. So now we have a pointed bottom, all right. Feed some more beads on, and now we're gonna rotate. Now we are on to the fourth row, okay. Put this over your finger, put your thumb over it, leave about one bead of space where you can see, and now we're going to um, do a 90 degree angle wrap. Go behind, back to the front, push your beads, push. Rotate, oh, I needed more space. <laughs> so you might wanna wrap about half an inch of space. All right, that was a miscalculation. But you can always twi twist more. All right, so now we're gonna do a 45 degree angle wrap to make a pointed bottom. Go behind, back to the front at that angle, push the beads up, push down for our point. And we want seven rows. Okay. 
I'm going to wrap twice here and cut. And I want to reduce this to one bottom wire. So I'm going to cut right here and cut along the top. Bend this back and take my pliers and just kind of tuck that in. So that's nice and straight and not kinky. So when we assemble it, it'll be nice and straight. And we have one bud petal here and we want to make three bud petals to make one bud. In this demo, I'll be showing you how to assemble the bud. And for this, we'll need three of the bud units, one a sepal unit, one length of 18 gauge stem wire, uh, floor tape. We're going to use very minimal floor tape um, because we want to keep the stem as thin as possible. Uh, so that means use as very little floor tape as needed. Um, if you can, um, avoid the floor tape, but we may still need it at some, at some parts to help us along. And we'll need embroidery floss, and this is what we will um, use mainly to attach everything. All right. So let's take our stem of, stem of wire and straighten it out. It doesn't need to be completely straight because we are going to be, um, you know, we're going to be bending this. It won't, it won't have any movement or it won't be interesting if we, if we just left it completely straight. Okay. Now we're going to take our flower tape and wrap just about an inch or so of the tip of the stem and this will help the stem to be sticky and the uh, the stem of the petals will attach um, to the wire better otherwise it would be a little bit more slippery uh, than normal but you can definitely see if you can go go without it but this will help us keep the um, the the wires on to the stem wire so you want to take the fluoro tape and pull on it so this helps release the stickiness okay so let's put the fluoro tape over our stem wire okay let's bend this part back and just wrap the stem with it and as we go down we want to pull on the fluoro tape but not too hard that it breaks. <laughs> you know what? That should be enough. That should be enough anyways. Okay. Oh, and um, I forgot. We also need to use our 30 gauge wire to assemble. Now let's take our um, bud petals and let's shape them in kind of like this, like a C. like a C shape, or just put it over your finger and bend it over your finger like this. Okay, because buds, they, they, they tend to just kind of con concave in. All right, so we have our three petals. Now let's take our petals, have the wrong, put it against the stem here with the wrong side facing in with the wires facing in hold on to it and we're going to take our um, 30 gauge wire all right put the tail hold on to the tail here and then wrap it in to attach it wrap it maybe like two or three times Okay, and now we're going to attach our next one. And again, having the floral tape here will just, it just helps the wire stay on so it does not all slipping all over the place. Okay, so now let's attach the next one. The wrong side facing in. And for some reason I'm having issues. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Okay. All right. Drop this in a couple times, two to three times. And I'll attach the next one. And bring the um, the 30 gauge wire down about a quarter inch or so and cut. And we'll hold on to that tail, all right? And then we're going to take our sepals. We're gonna take, we're gonna hold on to the shorter um, tail wire here. Put the tail, put the sepals down. Hold on to the tail wire. Okay. We're gonna take this um, this sepals tail wire, the longer tail wire, and wrap it around the base of the bud here. Now you see where why we needed that allowance of bare space in between each um, sepal, so that we can wrap it around. the flower. Okay, so just take our wire and just wrap it around the base here and then hold, and then bring the tail wire down and hold on to the tail wires. Now I'm just going to wrap about quarter inch of this with the floral tape here. We don't want it to do too much but, we, but having the floral tape around that wire just gonna helps helps us when we wrap it with the embroidery floss. And if you see any kinks in these wires, you want to trim these. Okay. All right. And now we're gonna take the embroidery floss and floss the stem here. We're gonna go down about three inches. So put the tail. Hold on to the tail and then just wrap it around the stem and floss. Adjust your stem to the flow of how you would wrap. So it's better for me to wrap this way. All right, so this is about three inches. This is where I want to stop. Make a knot with the floss. And 
take the floral tape and just cover the knot a little bit. Okay, pull on the pull on the floral tape and cover the knot. Roll it around a bit so it's so that the um, floral tape stays on. And for this pattern, we just want to make one bud stem. In this demo, I'll be making the flower A petals, and I already have about six inches of the beads on to the wire here, and it is exactly the same. Um, as making the bud, one bead basic, round top, point in the bottom. Instead of the seven rows, we'll be making nine rows. So big whoop, big difference, <laughs> right? <laughs> And for this pattern, we'll need five petals for each flower A. And there's two flower A's in this pattern, so we'll be making a 10 of these pet petals in total. So we'll need to make 10 flower A petals. Did I not get enough beads on here? I did. I did get enough beads. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Poked myself. Oh man, is there blood? No blood yet. <laughs> Be careful. Be careful out there. All right. Be careful. Nope, no blood. Okay. All right. Like I said, we'll need to make 10 of these petals in total. In this demo, I'll be showing you how to assemble flower A. We have five of the flower A petals and assemble center. We need uh, one of the sepal units, floral tape as we need it, um, 30 gauge wire, 18 gauge stem wire, and embroidery floss. First, let's take the 18 gauge stem wire and I'm just going to straighten this out. It doesn't need to be incredibly straight because we will be bending it later. We'll be shaping it later. Pull on the floral tape. And we're just gonna wrap just a little bit of this, the wire here, about half an inch to an inch. We just need that little grip for the wires. Insert the stem wire into the assemble center. Um, right here, you see that there's a um, little hole there. You don't want to insert it too much, just a little bit in so that you have that little grip there. Hold on to the wire, hold on to the stems, and then wrap around just a few times very tightly. Now let's take the petals and attach them on one by one. And you want to have the front of the petal um, facing in. So you can bend it back like this and place it right along the stem here. Hold on to it and wrap maybe about two or three times in place. And now we're going to add in the next one. 
just like we did with the bud. going to trim this here and hold on to the tail. Now we're going to take the sepals and let's place it around the base here. Hold on to one of the tails and then take the other and wrap it around. And now you see why we need that allowance in the sepals. Okay. While we're holding on to the tail wires, let's take a look at these wires here. Um, we can reduce them, see if there are any kinks. Um, you want to cut out any wires with kinks. That'll help you get a smoother stem. Okay, just kind of taper them, taper the wire so that it's a, a smooth taper of the stem wire and not that it's it has like, like a bulge somewhere, right? Okay, so now we're going to take our floral tape and pull on it and wrap around the stem. Now let's take our embroidery floss and floss the stem. Um, I see that there's, you can see some of the wires here. And so what I am going to do is I'm going to hold on to the tail here and put it around the, this one sepal because I want to cover this part up with the embroidery floss. I'm going to go this way to go around this one too. So that should be good. All right. And now we're just going to wrap the floss around the stem. We want to wrap the embroidery floss down the stem about three inches, and it's usually where the flow tape ends. All right, let's cut our floss. Let's make a knot. And 
then take our flower tape, pull on it, and wrap the knot, and wrap the knot in. I'm just going to leave it at that. All right, so again, let's shape our flowers, shape as we're making them. So when we do the final assembly, we just need to do like a final shaping, just kind of like little final touches, but we want to shape them as we make them. For this pattern, we want to make two flower A's. In this demo, I'll be showing you how to make flower B petals. Again, we'll be using the basic frame technique, but on top of that, we'll be learning the scalloping technique. I have the first part of the petal started already with a one bead basic, rounded top, pointed bottom, seven rows. I cut seven inches of wire off of the spool after that. So let's proceed with the next step. I'm going to string some beads onto the wire um, for the eighth row. And we're going to line this up so that there is one bead on the previous row. So I'm going to remove some beads here so that we have that one bead of space. And that will be a one bead count scallop. All right. So now let's take the working wire, go behind the previous row, bring it back up to the front. And I'm gonna put my, my thumb or my fingernail right between the first bead and the second bead here to just kind of give myself that space and pull on the working wire and bring the working wire to the left. All right, so now you see that this is kind of um, not tight. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna push it in place. It's wire. We know that we have the right amount of beads. So let's just push that in place, All right? Sometimes you may need to remove a bead if it looks to be too loose after you push all the beads in, you can, you know, just kind of break a bead. Does it look like I might need to break a bead? Let's try that. Okay. Just it might be a bit loose. So I'm going to crack a bead here. Okay. And then pull on the wire and bring it back. And push this row in. And that looks to be good. Now for the second part of the scallop, we're going to string some more beads on. So this is row nine. So let's push the bead so that it covers most of the wire here. If it doesn't cover it all, and it won't, that's perfectly fine. Like it's not covered all the way, but you still want to push it um, as much as you can. All right, I'm gonna need more beads over here. Okay. You want to kind of mold it and shape it as you go. Okay. And we're going to remove the excess beads right here. And I'm just going to make my wrap here. And now because we are making two rows on the one side, on the left hand side, you're going to need to wrap a little bit differently for this um, for this ninth row, because they're both row eight and nine are both on 
on the left hand side. So we're going to maintain this at a 45 degree angle on the bottom here. I'm going to go behind and back to the front. And, be, and like I said, because we are making two rows on one side, we need to reposition this working wire so that uh, it would come out in between these two rows right here. So I'm going to take our working wire and put it through up between um, row 8 and 9 and pull it up. Okay, so now the working wire is in between these two rows. And now we are ready to make the next two rows or the second scallop. And for the second scallop, we are going to do a two bead count scallop. So that means we're going to count from the top two beads right here. So we're going to string on our bead so that it lines up with this row up to this point. All right, so let's string our beads on. So I'm going to remove this bead here. All right, so we've lined this up and let's take this working wire, go behind these rows here. And we're going to position the wire in between um, the second bead and the third bead right in the middle there. And we're going to pull it to the right. And this time there's, it's not that loose at all, but we still want to kind of push that in, right? Kind of mold it along, make sure it's nice and tight. Because if you don't, even though you may have the right amount of beads, if you don't mold it along, your subsequent rows will be more loose as well and then you'll use more beads because of that extra spacing. And you may need extra wire because of that extra spacing. So just a little bit of molding along um, definitely helps. Not only do you have a better looking pedal, but you also save on resources, on wire, and also beads. Okay, so now we're going to make a wrap here. Okay, I'm going to first of all cut this here so that it's on one wire. I'm just going to take this and wrap it around one more time. Trim. I'm going to tuck these in gently. and cut the top and finish off. Now that you've gotten the hang of making the first flower bee petal and know how much wire to cut, um, here is a quick tip on how to make these faster. So what I have done is I've made the first part of the petal and then I've cut the wires off because I know that this is the right amount of wire for me to make this flower bee petal. So I make a bunch of these, set them aside, make this first part of the petal. And then for the next part, I will focus on making the scallops. And I only recommend that you doing that once you get the hang of making your first petal to know um, that you have the right amount of cut wire because you don't want to um, not having made the petal before and then cutting all of your wires and then having it um, not work out. But once you've made one or maybe even two to get the hang of making your petals and you know exactly that this is the right length that you need for your wire, then go ahead and cut off the wires. Your wire lengths could um, be different than mine. Your wire length could depend on how loose you bead. So I don't want you cutting all the all these wires out and find out that you know after you cut all of them you don't have the right length of wire. So that's a quick tip.
make five petals for each flower B. We'll be making two flowers, so we need 10 petals total. Now we're going to assemble flower B and we're going to need five of the flower B petals, one assemble center, one sepal unit, embroidery floss, floral tape, 30 gauge wire, and one 18 gauge stem wire. And this is basically the same process um, as flower A. Wrap just the tip with the floral tape. Insert the stem into the center and wrap secure it in with the assembly wire with the 30 gauge wire. And now we're going to put on each of the flower bee petals one by one. Wrap the sepals in, place the sepals around the base of the flower, hold on to one of the tail wires and wrap it around. Take one of the tail wires and wrap it around. Oh, it's not at the base good enough. Okay. Hold on to the one of the tail wires securely, pull on the other tail wire and wrap. I'm just going to do that. What's going on today? <laughs> okay, what's going on? All right. All right, here we go. I'm just going to wrap this in with floral tape. Pull on it. And now we're going to floss this in. Now you see this um, wire here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place the embroidery floss in behind one of the sepals so that it covers that wire there. Like sometimes it just happens that way where you get you can't wrap it all with the um, floral tape. So we gotta do it with the floss. Push this wire in a little.
In the pattern, you'll have enough to make two of flower B, but、um, just assemble and floss one of the flower B's for now. We will assemble and floss the other one at the end when we do the final assembly. Now we are ready to do the final assembly. We have our one assembled bud,、uh, two of the f- assembled flower A, one of the assembled flower B, and five of the assembled leaf stems.、Uh, we have our、um, components for flower B to be assembled: floral tape, 30 gauge wire, and 18 gauge stem wire. Now we're going to do the final assembly, and we're going to assemble flower B as usual. So I have flower B assembled and flossed down about three inches, and now we are ready to attach the rest of the stems. So I'm just going to、um, floss in at this point a leaf stem. And we're going to go down about a quarter to half an inch. Okay, that looks good. And then we're going to. Attach another leaf stem, and we're going to do that on the opposite side of the first leaf stem. Oh, and we want to have the the right side of the leaves facing in. So when we bend these back, the 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 front without the wires is facing facing you, so that the back is facing the back. See that? All right. So now we're going to attach the second leaf stem here. Opposite the first one, Okay, so that's about a quarter inch, a little bit over a quarter inch. Now, at this point, we're just going to attach the rest of the leaves and flowers in,、um, just kind of at alternate positions、um, as we go down on the stem wire, just for interest. So next, I'm going to add a bud here. It's right at this spot. So the first leaf is at this position. the、uh, The second leaf stem is at、um, the opposite. So I'm going to do it at this side of. So it's on on different poles. So that's on different poles of the stem. Okay. Just wrap these in tightly. Okay, so now we're going to determine what to do next.、Um, I think I'll add another flower、um, at this point here. So the bud is at this position. So I'm going to add another flower at、um, the opposite end, and I think I will do a flower A right here.
straighten out this floss here. Okay, so okay, now I'm going to add in a leaf stem. Just just pick a spot, <laughs> pick a spot where you think it might do well. All right. want it at the spot because this leaf is at like just kind of at the same spot as this leaf I might just want to change that okay I don't want it here okay so maybe right here or right here I think right here right here <laughs> all right We are ready to add on the next stem. What should I do? I think I'll add another flower right here. It's kind of bare, so let me put in a flower B right at this spot. Okay, I'm going to add in a leaf stem right here.
Let me add in a flower A right here. So there's a bare spot there. So flower A it is. And I've got one more leaf stem to attach. Just make sure to pull on the floss very tightly. You don't want this to be loose. All right, we've got one more leaf stem. Let's decide where we want that. I think we want it. I don't know. <laughs> Let's put it here. So here we've got our last stem um, attached and we just want to keep flossing our um, embroidery floss down the stem here. And I think I'm going to go um, floss down about two to three inches and then cut our um, stem so that they are flush. So let's do that first. So it all depends on where you want to end your stems. Oh. All right, so I have my heavy duty cutter not here, so I'm using this regular wire cutter on these stem wires. Oh. oh man, that's painful. But I'm not gonna get up and get my other wire cutters, so I'm gonna suffer through this. You know how that goes. We're going to make do with what we've got. Because I'm on a roll and I'm not getting up. <laughs> I'm on a roll, so I'm going to suffer. Right? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to keep flossing down the stem. Oh, I've got like a little knot in this... Embroidery floss. What's going on? It's not good. I am not done. I may be able to get the knot out. Okay. You think I can do it? Oh my gosh, I did it. <laughs> I'm going to do this because I'm getting impatient. Okay. Maybe I need to remind myself not to be impatient. I kinda I kinda don't like how the floss looks when I wrap that way. Let's try again this way. All right. All right. Let's be patient. I 
I'm talking to me and to you. <laughs> uh, okay. You know, at, at the end, you just want it to be done. And hold it up this way for now. So you might just need to change positions if it gets uncomfortable one way, because it can get, I guess, a bit uncomfortable to keep doing it one way, like, you know, with your hand motions and with, you know, the wire and flowers being so heavy. Okay. And I'm going to floss down until there's about two inches of the bare wire. or not. Yay! We're almost there. Okay, make a knot. I'm just going to hold on to the end or hold on to the knot there and cut the excess. Take our floral tape. Pull on the floral tape and wrap around the stem. Just might need to do it a different way or just cut some floral tape off so that we can easily wrap it. Okay, and I'm like pulling the floral tape off. <laughs> going on today? God, nothing's going my way. <laughs> nothing's going my way. Okay. All right. Trim this. And then we got this little bit in. We're just going to tuck that up. Now we can shape our stems here. Give it a lot of motion. Shape our petals, shape our leaves. Just fix it just the way that you like it, that you want it to be presented. I kind of want to like bend this all the way to like one side. 